For some problems, it's not quite the complexity that makes it so challenging, but rather the number of moving parts. And this is one of those problems. You have four lists of integer values, and you want to gather all of the indices of those integers where their sum equals zero. Now, of course, a trivial solution would look something like 4v1 in A, 4v2 in B, uh, 4v3 in C, and so on. Um, up till you get to 4v4 in D, um, if sum if sum equals zero, then increment, right? Of course, this is not a great solution. It's not even a good solution, actually, because ultimately you are running a cost of n to the four um, um, computations, and depending on how big these arrays get, that could take uh, forever. <laughs> Uh, without loss of generality so we need a bit more elegant solution and this is where you have to take control of a lot of moving parts okay and so our key data structure here is going to be the hash table or the dictionary in python and let's make those by um, calling them uh, relative to the list that we're dealing with so da db dc and dd those are going to be our um, dictionaries that we're dealing with okay now, the next thing we need to do is gather the number of times that these values appear in each of these lists, okay? So what that'll look like is for, for V in A, for V in A, if V not in DA, that dictionary that involves A, DA V equals zero, and then of course we want to increment, we want to increment wherever we are with that value from A. And then we'll repeat this logic uh, for each of the lists, and that'll look something like this. For V and B, do the same thing, DB, DB, and DB. And then we'll do the same thing for C. So for V and C, DC, DC, DC. And again, for D, we will say for V and D, DD, DD, and DD. Okay, so now that we've gathered all of our uh, counts of the values in each of these lists, we have to uh, bring the sums together a bit more elegantly. And that way we're going to do it is by making another two, another two dictionaries that allow us to uh, kind of make split aggregations of the sums by pairs of the two lists, two sets of lists rather. And that'll look something like this. For K and DA, for K2 and DB, for k2 in db, if k plus k2 not in d1, okay, then we want to put we want to put that pair in d1. So d1 k plus k2 equals d a k times db k2 times db k2 because that's the combination that's the combination of of um, times that the uh, values appear in each of those arrays that we aggregated previously else else d1 k plus k2 equals d1 d1 k plus k2 plus d a k times d b k2 so essentially we need the number of of times that they appear together Right, that's the combination of times plus the combinations that we've brought together from the previous times that we've seen them. All right, now that we've done that for DA and DB, we're going to have to repeat that for the pairs for DC and DD. So we say 4K and DC, 4K2 and DD, right? If K plus K2 not in D2, D2, K plus K2 equals DBK times or rather dck times ddk2 else d1 goes to d2 d1 goes to d2 and dc times dd this is a lot of moving parts if you are new i guess to these types of problems i really really advise you to spend quite a bit of time with this solution so you can really get used to how to navigate all the moving parts now we have to gather the number of times that these occur, where they um, meet our target, where they equal to zero. So we say c equals zero. That'll be our, our, um, our variable to increment. 4k in d1 
for k in d1, if 0 minus k in d2, 0 minus k in d2, c plus equals d1, d1, k, times d2, 0 minus k. And then we return c, we return, return c, run, accepted, submit, outstanding.